Lida and I'm at the ESA with Dr. Terry Irwin from the Smithsonian. Hi. <laughs> and <laughs> I just want to know what would be your advice for grad students starting in a career they are interested in diversity or something? What would you, you tell them? Um, arrange for a trip to the tropics, especially the Amazon basin, and uh, do some fogging and you will be so overwhelmed by the biodiversity coming out of the trees that uh, you'll probably want to do a lab course instead. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's where you actually see the incredible amount of biodiversity and once you see it, you're hooked and that's it. That'll be the rest of your life. Yeah, because I did my field work in Panama and I didn't do the fogging but <laughs> with flight intercept traps. Yeah. And it was starting to get overwhelming at some point. <laughs> yeah, no, you find you, so much. It's anywhere just, in the tropics, and yeah. even though you're in Panama, 11 degrees north, yeah. it's still within the the range, the, the range of in, incredible biodiversity. Yeah, yeah. And um, I went to uh, the talk by um, uh, Grimaldi yesterday. Yep. And it, it was kind of interesting, went along, but at the very end he made this huge mistake. And I was going to respond to it, but there were so many people and people leaving and I decided to do it later. Mm -hmm. he, um, he said, well, there's probably about five million species. And if we add the fossils over deep time, mm -hmm. maybe there's a hundred million species. Well, in my plots in Ecuador, In one hectare, there's more than 100,000 species. In, in one, one hectare, hectare of forest. Yes. Yeah. And you think about that, and that's one kind of forest in western Ecuador. Mm -hmm. And um, the western Amazon, but on the east part of Ecuador. And um, then you think there's more than 400 different forest types in the Amazon basin. Yeah. And in the Amazon basin, there's 17 billion hectares. Do the math. <laughs> Five million species is a joke. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> But he's a paleontologist, what does he know? <laughs> <laughs> It's a different perspective, for sure. <laughs> and what about uh, combining taxonomy and ecology? Because some people go into taxonomy and they don't go to the field or they just have a different way of working. Yes. And people in ecology, they don't interact so much with taxonomy sometimes. How, what do you think about that link between those? That's a really good question because right now um, Section A, it used to be called Section A, now it's um, Sissy B or something like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that's what the nickname is, Sissy yeah. B. Uh, we're actually talking about how to do that and also at the ECN the same issue came up. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is actually um, put together a group of people that uh, goes to the other ESA, for example, and talk to the ecologists about systematics and try to get some kind of, um, of cooperation so that taxonomists understand where their information is going and then the ecologist knows that we're not just service oriented to identify their specimens but we actually know the natural history better than any ecologist knows. Yeah, yeah. And also they would have the, poss the ecologists would have the possibility of let's say um, broadening their horizon because they could work on more than just one uh, species. Yeah, but and what do you think of one person trying to do Both. Yeah. Um, the ecologist um, Betty Loisel at the University of Missouri St. Louis, she actually had her ecology students do um, phylogenetic analysis on the small group that they were working on so mm -hmm. they could build their ecology on top of the um, phylogeny. Okay. And so, so it is happening in ecology. It is visible. <laughs> it, it is, yeah. And I, I, I think. In all ecology curricula, there should be basic taxonomy. Yeah. So they learn the rule, and, and actually also specimen preparation. Mm -hmm. So they have a good founding in that. Yeah. It's a little bit different because ecology is so theoretical, and there's the five big questions, and everybody's trying to piecemeal into one of those questions, mm -hmm. and they get that out of a book, and they use the observations that somebody else has made. Yeah. But actually. If, you're, um, if your attention is museums, then you can go in and every single specimen has uh, labels and, that's, and then the specimen itself has its size, its 
white, whatever, and, and yeah. have, maybe has some DNA. And so that one specimen is actually a data swarm. Yeah. And so if you can figure out how to use all those data swarms, the number of observations upon which you can actually erect hypotheses is incredible. And so the ecologists have to understand that resource. And the way to understand that resource is working with taxonomists.